According to the World Health Organization, of the 57 million or so people who die every year of various causes, so this is of all causes combined worldwide, about one in four individuals die of one or another infectious disease. Among infectious diseases, the big three are tuberculosis, HIV AIDS, and malaria, which together account for something like six to seven million deaths every year. It's worth noting, in fact, that tuberculosis is the leading cause of death worldwide among individuals who are infected with HIV AIDS. These two diseases synergize in a really sinister way. Obviously, being immunocompromised due to HIV AIDS infection predisposes an individual to acquire all kinds of infectious diseases, including tuberculosis. But it's become clear recently that having active tuberculosis also somehow accelerates progression from HIV infection to full-blown AIDS. So it's a real synergy between these two diseases, which uh, the convergence of which in developing countries has spelled a real disaster for public health globally. So two million deaths a year, so uh, attributed to tuberculosis, is, is obviously a large number, but it's really only the tip of the iceberg, what I like to call the iceberg of pathogenesis, in terms of its impact on global he uh, human health, which is illustrated in this pyramid diagram here. So it's a bit like an iceberg when you think about it. We tend to focus on the bit of the iceberg that shows above the waterline, the tip of the iceberg, but it truly is only part of the problem. And in fact, the bulk of the problem, the bulk of the iceberg, if you like, that is below the waterline is in fact what's going to sink your ship if you run into it. So it's much the same in the case of tuberculosis. We tend to focus on what we can see, what's obvious, which is the two million or so deaths attributable to TB each year. But in fact, that number is quite small compared to the number of active cases of tuberculosis at any given time, which is in the range of 16 to 20 million. That's a large number of individuals at any given time who are out there sick transmitting the disease, but even that number is dwarfed by the number of individuals who currently harbor the tubercle bacillus, albeit in a latent form. That number approaches two million. So at this point in history, about one in three people on the planet harbor the tubercle bacillus in their tissues and are at risk of developing disease. Now, if these individuals who have latent tuberculosis and are not infectious continued to harbor the infection only in a latent form, this would be sort of interesting medical curiosity, but not much more than this. The problem, as I've already indicated, is that individuals who are latently infected are at significant risk for the remainder of their lives of reactivating and developing full-blown infectious tuberculosis. The lifetime risk for an individual with latent TB is about 10%. That number goes up to about 10% per annum for individuals who become co-infected with HIV AIDS. When we think of the implications of this, it's, it's rather staggering in terms of the future of global public health. What it means is that even if today we could intervene with some magic intervention that blocked transmission and new infection from happening, let's say a transmission blocking vaccine, for example. Of course, we don't have a tool like that, but let's say we did. Even so, we could expect to see over the course of the next 50 years or so something like 200 million or more new cases of tuberculosis arising around the world due to the reactivation of infections that already exist today. So clearly there's an enormous need to tackle this problem of latent tuberculosis and reactivation, but the stark reality is that we currently have no tools whatsoever that are both effective and practicable to intervene against latent TB. The only tool we currently have to use against latent TB is nine months of chemoprophylaxis with a drug called isoniazid, and I don't need to explain, I think, why it is impractical to treat two billion people on a global basis with nine months of drug therapy. It's not going to happen. So this is an enormous unmet need, something I'll talk about again later in global health.